So this video, I'm gonna show how we can use two position segments to refine the location between features when you don't care about the rotation to another side. So this is a made up part that I have here called the spreader shaft, and it was inspired by an agricultural equipment here where you had a component in purple that you rotate, and then it's supposed to pull on this lever on the other side. Now, rotationally, it doesn't matter so much where the two holes are to each other because of the adjustment we have in the system, but it is important that this side is related to the axis and the other side also stays on center of the axis. So first, how would we set up the datum reference frame for a part like this? That blue part is so long, I think we wanna go with an axis datum on this. And the outside of this is not really that critical. What's most important is how this component pilots into this hole and how this other component pilots into this hole. So we're gonna select that A-B as our primary datum axis here. So we've selected the hole in one side of it as 15 millimeters and call that A. And then we're gonna grab the other side, which is the same 15 millimeter hole and call that B. So when we do A-B, we probably learned from unit nine that that's gonna create a single datum axis going through both of them. And we use position tolerance to make sure they're tied to that single datum axis. All right, so we still have to constrain two more degrees of freedom. We have to constrain the rotation of the part, and we have to constrain the translation of the part. So to constrain rotation, they selected C. So looking down the axis, that's that center axis here, we're gonna line up the slot center plane, right dead nuts 12 o'clock, and that will give us the rotational alignment of the part. Now we still have to stop translation along that axis, and so they selected D here as the tertiary. So A-B is our primary, C is our secondary stopping rotation, and D is our tertiary stopping translation. And that's all on the driver end of it, the one with the slot. Now these holes that are on that same side with the slot, we have a position tolerance here of 0.2, because it's important that these holes are not only relative to each other, but also relative to the datum axis and the slot that mounts that first purple piece. So now let's talk about the other end of the shaft. So first, this face is given a larger profile tolerance of 1.2, and that's because the length of this shaft wasn't that critical. It could be plus or minus 0.6 millimeters, and that would be fine. However, it is important that that side stays perpendicular. So make sure you cut it perpendicular, but I don't really care what the cut length is as much. So now let's look at the holes going in in this view here. So remember the slot is on the far end of the part, so it's on the other side. And these three holes really have to be relative to each other and relative to the axis, but it's very difficult manufacturing-wise to put these three holes in relative to the slot on the far end of the part. And so we give them a larger position tolerance here. We say, yeah, you can have a position of 0.8 relative to the A-B and when you're clocked to C. However, it's more important that these holes are relative to each other and stay centered on the axis. So we use a multi-segment position here and the lower position is controlling the hole to hole and relationship to the axis. It's refining what you've set by the larger spec. Now sometimes people look at this and they say, why do you make it so complicated? Why don't you just do a position tolerance within 0.2 to A-BC? Now that would functionally get those holes related to the axis and the slot, but manufacturing wise, that's a lot more difficult to make sure that these holes are clocked to the slot on, on the other side. So we loosen this up and say, I don't really care what the location to the slot is as long as they're on center and to each other. So I'd like to animate this feature control frames here a little bit better with this. So remember the slot is on the far side of the part and that's why I have it as a hidden line. And then we're looking at these three holes on this near side. So the top position frame here, what do the tolerance zones look like? So here are your exaggerated tolerance zones of 0.8. And those are fixed in reference to your datum reference frame and when you're clocked to your C datum center plane there. Now within those, that means the holes could shift or tilt within those zones. Now I wanna add another specification, the point two, and notice how that only has the locational constraint of A-B, but you're unlocked relative to C. So what are those red tolerance zones allowed to do? They can rotate at as a group as long as they stay located to each other and stayed center on the axis, then we're happy. So that means the actual hole axes could be anywhere inside of both zones at the same time. They could be all up in here 
or they could be all up over here, or they could be all up a different direction as long as not one hole goes this way and the other hole goes that way because then they're not rotationally aligned to each other. So this double position frame can be handy for long pieces like that when the relationship to one side is really not that critical as long as these holes the holes are good and relative to the axis. And hopefully you can see the application now is this is your leader features right here and that's where most of our datum reference frame is selected with the clocking and this is like a refinement. It's a group that I need relative to itself but not as much rotational need relative to the datums. So hopefully that helps you see the reason why we would use a bigger position tolerance and then refine its distance to each other and closer to a, our primary datum axis.